we now have this new development in Turkey, which is the earthquake and multiple earthquakes uh, to synthesize in terms of Turkey's stance towards Saudi Arabia and other countries. Um, what was the significance of Turkish President uh, Erdogan's recent meeting with Saudi Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman? And how do you see this playing out in the future? And how will this new development affect these rela this relationship? Yes, let's talk about a little bit uh, on the global, I mean, changes that we see that's also shaping regional and also domestic uh, affairs. And remember, we had a very drastic uh, COVID uh, pandemic. We have now Ukraine war. We had previously, we had the Arab Spring also shaken the region. And, uh, you know, uh, now uh, tension with uh, China and all this and a long time even America is trying to pivot to Asia and etc. So there are many changes. So uh, the global scene is dynamic and fluid, maybe, if we can say. And also the regional uh, status quo that is shaken after the Arab Spring with the demands for democracy and the status quo forces that are uh, trying to recover or going back to the original or the old order, if, uh, regional order, maybe. So in this sense, Turkey and some Arab countries, uh, in, because of the Arab Spring and Arab democracies, they adopted different uh, different perspectives. Turkey supported democracy and sided with Arab Arab revolutions. But at the end, we see Arab revolutions are kind of struggling. But Turkey, I mean, is not like a democracy promoting country. Turkey, if if they have to choose, choose the uh, people's side, but uh, of course, uh, the whole global and regional powers uh, remain with the status quo. So they left the uh, Arab people alone in, in many places. Uh, so Turkey also uh, tried to adapt to the new scene that uh, that is um, after maybe post Arab Spring uh, era with the COVID and with the global changes, etc. And now Turkey uh, last year uh, opened up uh, to the three main uh, regional countries, uh, Saudi Arabia, Egypt, mm -hmm. and the UAE. Three of them, they were of course with the status quo or they don't like uh, democracies, but at the end, uh, you know, they, they are uh, significant countries, important countries in the region. And seeing the uh, global context, uh, Turkey, uh, I mean, the leadership thought that we need to reset uh, the relations also because uh, the region is also in turmoil. Many crises happening from uh, Libya to Yemen still not solved, Syria not solved, and uh, many other things that uh, you, you already uh, know. Uh, and uh, so in this context, uh, Erdogan, he, uh, I mean, tried to normalize or wanted to normalize with three major countries. The mm -hmm. UAE was the the, uh, the most eager uh, country to to shake the hands, if you wanna maybe name it. You say Turkey extended its hand to to three countries, and the UAE was the uh, the one who shook uh, very strong, strongly. Saudi Arabia is, is in a normal sense. Egypt is a little bit uh, uh, hesitant, uh, maybe, and, and we can discuss these. But uh, th these are, I think, normal developments, usual expected developments, because politics is uh, also the, the art of possibilities. You know, there is no ideal politics, and you have to balance between the idealism and realism, and of course with the corona and all other things that are happening. Plus, also the uh, I think you know the status quo camp also realized Turkey is a is an important player in the region after mm -hmm. the exit of Trump, and you know if you remember Kushner and Trump and the and the Mohammed bin Zayed and Mohammed bin Salman they were very uh, frantic about uh, I mean shaping the new Middle East, but they realized also they cannot uh, decide themselves or they cannot shape the whole region. Uh, you know, uh, because there are people, there are countries, like let's remember the the Qatar siege or siege on Qatar. You know, mm -hmm. these countries uh, try to suffocate 
uh, Qatar, and they failed. I mean, thanks to Turkey and some other uh, I mean, uh, countries, and also the resistance of uh, Qatari government. Uh, and the Khashoggi uh, murder happened, and also it was a blow to the status quo forces, uh, and kind of uh, things uh, became even. So they realized it is better to to cooperate than uh, than compete. So this is mm -hmm. the logic that is also I think prevailing in the current state of affairs in the in the Turkish neighborhood. I mean Turkey and its Arab neighbors. And we have Syria file, we have Libya, we have, you know, economic problems in Tunisia, in Egypt is in, is in very big trouble. Uh, Lebanon is already, you know, I, I, I say in, uh, I mean, and in my analysis, I say there are countries that already bl uh, blown up. that are also maybe ready to blow up, like uh, Lebanon already blown up, Yemen, Syria. Uh, but also with these uh, economic changes and crisis, uh, especially food crisis uh, that's affecting Egypt and Tunisia, that may also blow up any time. Uh, and uh, Jordan uh, is struggling economically. And so there are uh, tensions, there are uh, you know pressure points in the region, if you may, and these these are uh, you know require uh, more attention, I think. For analysis, yes. Uh, speaking of cooperation uh, between Turkey, Turkey now, right? It's I know Turkey. Just yes, we, it sounds like more Arabic now. Yeah, but we, we say Turkey also. Turkey, we yeah, yeah. We, with, without shaddayan, uh, without emphasis. <laughs> yeah, we, we, I want to actually circle back to that in, in, a, in a couple of minutes. Uh, why the name change and the rebranding? But speaking of cooperation. Um, how much uh, did Turkey play a role in, or Turkey, I should say, play a role in the cutback in oil and the decision for the, when the Gulf states decided to cut back the oil just recently? Um, did, the, did, it, did the country play any role in that and, and to what extent, if any? I think it was the arrival of uh, Biden era, of course, after the exit of Trump. Uh, you know, Biden talked big about or negatively about Saudi Arabia, Mohammed bin Salman, and uh, other issues, and uh, maybe election campaign, elec election promises, etc. But at the end, uh, we realized, you know, that America is trying to bully uh, or kind of pressure Turkey and Saudi Arabia. Similarly, I mean, different contents maybe, but they try to uh, force or uh, pressure uh, both countries. We, we've seen they are doing this in Syria with the support of PKK and the PYD and mm -hmm. other things that we we we, are, we complain about. And uh, of course, it co uh, co coincided with the uh, Biden pressure on the MBS and uh, Turkey said, uh, you know, you cannot uh, decide unilaterally as America as a superpower, of course, maybe even hyperpower, but uh, you know, there are rules that apply to everybody, you know, and uh, they pressure uh, Saudi Arabia uh, to, to cut down uh, uh, or to cancel the limiting. I mean, they were the OPEC wants to, OPEC plus wanted to cut down oil production and Biden opposed to that and criticized that. We said, I mean, this is their... Uh, their freedom, you know, you cannot uh, threaten or you cannot pressure them. Even though we financially we suffer from the high oil prices, gas prices, etc. But uh, Turkey publicly, Turkey, let's say, uh, publicly supported the Saudi position or the OPEC position overall. Uh, in principle, not in uh, in practical or maybe. Uh, more benefit-wise, you know, benefit-wise, Turkey was losing because it is hurting uh, high prices, hurting Turkey. But uh, principle, uh, principle-wise, Turkey they are sided with the with the Saudi Arabia's decision. Yes. Mm -hmm. So I think this created kind of a trust and maybe a link, more stronger ties with the Saudi Arabia. 
Yeah, it's just interesting to see this shift, you know, especially with the the recent NATO uh, row there between uh, amongst Turkey, Sweden, and Finland. It's interesting to uh, you know interpret this shift in behavior on Turkey's behalf, Turkey as we have. Um, but we'll circle back to that in a minute. So I want to kind of like uh, go back uh, to not go back. I want to talk about Ukraine a little bit and Tur Turkey. Yeah. So um, Turkey's role in Ukraine, the Ukraine war and mediation in grain supply, for example, and the meeting of Russian and Ukrainian human rights commissioners in Turkey, uh, showing that Ankara can balance good ties between two opposing interests. What does it show about Turkey's growing foreign policy ambitions at, at this juncture in time? Is that with the Ukraine war or with, with the region? Yeah. yeah. I the mean, Ukraine Turkey, war specifically. Yes. Turkey uh, wants to be, of course, independent. Of course, we are a NATO ally. That The, the things that we complain about, the American uh, policy, they, they want the relationship to be one-sided. You know, they, they want to dictate or they want to impose certain policies and we go for it. No. We say we have uh, maybe... We are allies for sure. We we don't want to fight. We don't want to uh, go into conflict mode. But uh, we also have our own security concerns and priorities and economic uh, interests and uh, social cultural uh, mm -hmm. you know background. So we also I mean unlike what they say, Turkey is a Turkey is a democratic country. That is uh, elections decide who is gonna win. Not like the other Middle Eastern countries. If they have elections, of course, uh, if they don't, uh, they don't, we don't worry about that. But even, uh, I mean, everybody now, they don't know who is going to win. So uh, everybody wants to please or attract to the, to the public. And uh, so this, this is the dynamic of uh, Turkish foreign policy that is uh, uh, economic interest, cultural values, idealism, and also uh, international uh, maybe uh, alignments, etc. So in this sense, uh, we we are not happy with you know one sided uh, dictating and other side is uh, also saying yes sir all the time. And this changed. Uh, we realized it changed with uh, several crises happened with uh, even started with the uh, when Ak Party Erdogan first came to power in 2000 at the end of 2002. Uh, Bush, the son George W. Bush, he forced Turkey to uh, to uh, to to join them with the coalition to invade Iraq. And Turkish Parliament said, "No, we we don't want to uh, to be a part of that." And also many other issues that's coming. And also Turkey became stronger economically, uh, militarily. Also Erdogan. He consolidated the civilian rule and gave him some confidence to to say no in a sense that uh, uh, he can uh, maneuver, he can bargain, he can. And we, we the the main desperation or the main uh, worry or the main problem happened when, uh, of course, uh, Turkey was left alone in Syria. Turkey, uh, Turkey was very upset that. Uh, America left, uh, uh, allowed Iran, allowed uh, Russia, and also used the uh, excuse of uh, ISIS, the presence of ISIS, uh, to fight uh, or to to fund the PKK, and uh, of course leaving uh, the Syrians alone with the refugees, with the people's aspirations for democracy, you know, uh, un unfulfilled and. This was a major breaking point and this uh, may be disappointment. So Turkey began to take care of its own problems by itself. It tried to build its own military, it not not depend on on America as much. Plus, mm -hmm. you know, uh, Turkey is a uh, um, producing partner of the F-16 and F-35. Uh, now America says, you know, we don't want to uh, sell them to you and of course, this is not even fair. We already paid even the even the price of it. Our share of the project we paid it already. So, I mean, you cannot uh, you can be a superpower, but you cannot be as uh, sporadic as uh, yeah. I mean, 
as uh, uh, I mean uh, unpredictable maybe let's say uh, or not committing to to your own words and uh, Turkey now then became, especially in Syria when Turkey realized let's, I mean let's expand the Syria file a little bit more because when Turkey realized that, I mean, America has, or the West overall, I, know, I don't want to blame only America, but uh, has no intention to bring democracy to Syria. And, uh, mm -hmm. and Syrian people were resisting. And, uh, and Russia and Iran are, were destroying the, the country. So Turkey said, let's at least, um, if the West has no intention, let's sit with Putin. Let's sit with the major attacking part that you, I think, in in the region, you are well aware of how was it going, and uh, Turkey at least uh, sit uh, with uh, Putin, uh, mm -hmm. assured that the whole northern Syria was not given to the PKK or PYD. There are many namings that they are using to the, to distract people, but they are the same organization at the end. And uh, they, after they sit at least with the Astana process, the Syrian crisis was frozen. I think it was a good, uh, at least, good uh, way to, to stop the bloodshed because people were, I mean, million people were killed and they also, the others were uh, migrating either toward Turkey or Lebanon or Jordan or to the, to the West, to Europe and etc. And it's still a huge, of course, uh, suffering, I mean, uh, is continuing, but at least we, we, we can say that the Astana process stopped the bloodshed, maybe it did not solve the crisis, but at least uh, not more people are dying from bombings and etc., or especially the barrel, mm -hmm. barrel bombings that were hurting people. So uh, this is the, the, the disappointment Turkey had, and now uh, they are uh, talking, but Turkey now is more cautious, you know, uh, uh, Obama uh, promised many, many times, red, said red lines, chemical weapons, all this, and didn't do anything. So we are uh, also cautious against uh, Obama number two of our version two with the Biden administration, and I, Biden was next to him, so I think he's also part of this uh, situation. Uh, and uh, now, uh, of course, Turkey realize Turkey can maneuver between the superpowers and your question with the Ukraine war, the same, this is not our war. Of course, it is sad that we, I mean, we were fighting with Russia in Syria. We also, we uh, showed a big resistance uh, in the annexation of Crimea. But, uh, you know, uh, unfortunately, you know, some big powers or some circles Either they have their own agenda or their own priorities. When we're complaining about Russia, nobody listened. Nobody joined us. Now they complain, and because this this way, I mean, Putin got uh, became a lot bolder, you know, a lot uh, uh, ambitious, and uh, so uh, we, I mean, we of course as a medium power or regional power, we we did our best and still trying to to do to protect our people, protect our interests also. Uh, I mean, we are not against the West, we are not against the East, um, but we, we also see there are changes, there are significant developments, so we should uh, take care of ourselves. Uh, and with Turkey, when Turkey downed the Russian jet flight, there was, there was a Patriot battery in the Turkish-Syrian border. And as if like uh, they want to uh, send a, of course, you don't want to send a positive message, but uh, as if the, uh, our NATO allies, they want to send a negative message, they withdrew this but, um, Patriot batteries, air shield, uh, air defense batteries from our border. I mean, so uh, we kind of disappointed and uh, this is the natural outcome. We have good relations with Ukraine, with Bayraktar, we also condemned the uh, invasion, not only the recent invasion, as I said, the Crimean annexation and air attack in in Syria, even uh, America and the West, they uh, went to stop Turkish and Libyan people, they uh, 
they tolerated Russian Wagner in, in Libya. Now they are thinking how to get rid of Wagner from Libya. Honestly, this is the recent uh, when the uh, CIA director Burns, he visited Libya. He, he tried to pressure Libyans and Egyptians, Haftar and uh, others to, to tell them to get rid of uh, Wagner Group out of uh, out of Libya, but uh, nobody complained when they came to stop the Libyan uh, Democratic Forces. So it is. It is a, of course we know it is not a fair world. It's not an ideal world, but we have to survive. Yes. Yeah. Well. I think uh, I think that Turkey has been in the news. Uh, Turkey has been in, in the news a lot lately, um, and that just goes to show how much uh, it's trying to rebrand itself as a global leader, uh, reassert its dominance uh, after the COVID-19 pandemic and after you know the Ukraine war and all that. And uh, I think uh, you know, well, now we have also the elections coming up, correct? About four yeah. months away, so we want in May. So how? And you know, President Erdogan has kept close ties with Russia. Like, how do you think? How will the NATO, for example, uh, problem now with Sweden and uh, uh, especially with Sweden, Finland, affect uh, Erdogan's positioning himself as both an honest broker in the Ukraine war and a global leader? Like, how yes, will he play yes. that out? It's a, a multi-faceted question, but let let's say that Turkey became more active diplomatically in the global scene, uh, also parallel to its uh, its economic and uh, maybe military power. Bayraktar became very popular in, in Ukraine and uh, also around the world. Uh, and uh, of course, uh, Turkey tried to balance uh, its uh, idealist principles, uh, policies with the, uh, with the of course, real politics uh, that's uh, affecting everybody. We had the Ukraine crisis, of course, we opposed that, but uh, uh, we, we didn't start the war. We, we are not also consulted with the, with the war, but uh, Turkey also when realized uh, there is a big shortage of uh, food around the globe because of the Ukraine uh, unable to export its own grains and uh, so broker the deal between Ukraine and and Russia, which helped a lot, which helped uh, African countries, Arab countries especially. Mm -hmm. As you know, Arab countries they import a lot of uh, food from outside and mm -hmm. other other parts of the world. So there was a relax. I mean, uh, I mean, feeling relaxed in this sense. And uh, one thing also, uh, Turkey. Uh, Try to stall. Actually, they br brought uh, the two parts in the Antalya Forum last year. Uh, they uh, only Turkey. I mean, the first time uh, Turkish. I mean, uh, Ukrainian and uh, Russian with the Turkish mediation, of course, came together. But looks like mm -hmm. you know this is a super. I mean, uh, global war, not uh, Ukraine-Russia war. I see it yeah. uh, as a global war because it is fought between. Uh, three superpowers, and we have already four superpowers, and three of them fighting, you know, China, Russia, the US, and the EU, or Europe, uh, we can say. And three of them are fighting uh, directly or indirectly. So this is a global war, maybe third mm -hmm. world war. And oh. uh, it is not, uh, I mean, it's going to take a while to uh, to realize that uh, maybe every time everybody is testing if the water still, the uh, I mean, the, I mean, uh, the last thing or endurance, let's say, they are mm -hmm. uh, testing each other's endurance and the capacity of waging wars. And uh, the West was very generous uh, to support uh, aid to Ukraine. Uh, and not uh, the same generosity we see to help the Syrians and other needy people that's also we complain uh, about it yeah, i mean uh, so when they give it to war you know they give in billions they give it to humanitarian you know people are dying in similar cases and uh, yeah. they give it in millions you know thousand times difference 
And uh, so at the end, Turkey now, uh, in I mean, taking an active I mean, uh, role in the, the many different uh, positions in the Ukraine war, in Syria, in also uh, maybe normalize uh, a little bit. Or I, actually, Turkey normalized with Israel a long time ago, but uh, things became tense due after the uh, Mavi Marmara incident and the relations were uh, uh, limited. Now it, it became like the uh, previous times, so uh, not much difference on this. But uh, again, we know uh, Syria file is also related to Israel, Egypt, Palestine, many, many issues. Uh, is related to also concern. I mean, it concerns Israel. So uh, we we think that it's better to talk to Israel, uh, unlike the you know uh, the Gulf mo uh, the formula that they they think that let's give everything. I mean, Israel everything that uh, they want. Then we have peace. We think that let's talk uh, to get the Palestinian and other uh, regional peoples uh, assure their rights and. I mean, negotiations and talking is a medium for this. So there is difference, but uh, things also uh, becoming normal with Israel more than before. But of course, we don't know uh, when Netanyahu made a, make a maybe an awful thing that uh, can stir up the public opinion and cause a lot of uh, uproar, maybe. So oh, these things are not assured, but uh, we know, uh, you know, uh, a new atmosphere, a new region, a new global scene requires uh, maybe negotiations, dialogue, uh, than conflict. So we, we hear Turkey more in, in many, many files. Yeah, I um, want to kind of uh, push a little deeper on the Ukraine issue too. Um, I mean, is this, do you think in your from your point of view, is this a sustainable strategy for Turkey? Kind of like, as we say here, straddling the fence, you know, between, for example, um, we just heard news that uh, Turkey and Russia are both coordinating on the gas and nuclear power to, to the benefit of Russia. Mm -hmm. um, what is Turkey's interest beyond the economic explanation in walking this delicate, this not risky line? Is there another explanation besides just economic interest or you know uh, national interest that you might want to throw into the explanation? Yeah, I mean it is maybe risky, but life is full of uh, risks. So you, you measure the risks. Uh, of course, when we drive, everything is is, is risky. We, we mm -hmm. when we drive, we take on an airplane, uh, and you need to measure. You need to limit the risks. But uh, we realize Turkey is now uh, you know not uh, not like the old turkey that is siding with uh, with one side and uh, there is not even like a real cold war if there is maybe a cold war that forces to take side uh, maybe but uh, I, I believe personally i believe in the neutrality and balance because turkey is a bridge even the uh, geographical location uh, impose that uh, on Turkey because we are bridging, uh, I mean, Asia and Europe. Uh, mm -hmm. If you take one side, you get the other side against you. So we don't want to uh, have that. We want to uh, have good relations for both sides. Turkey can benefit. Turkey is an industrial and touristic country and has also strong uh, agriculture, but Turkey also can benefit from trade also from Mm -hmm. uh, east and west and uh, south and north also, like the I mean, grain deal was a reflection of that uh, uh, the link between uh, and we realized how uh, are how the seas are uh, important. You know, uh, with the Turkish uh, two straits, Istanbul, Istanbul and Dardanelles, or Bosphorus and Dardanelles uh, straits that's uh, connecting east. I mean, north and south. So we can benefit from this uh, global trade, uh, global dialogue, uh, and we cannot close ourselves, I mean, Turkish, or we cannot just uh, limit ourselves to one side. So I think the balanced approach is has limits, has uh, risks, but I think has more advantages uh, 
uh, we don't know how the Ukraine war, maybe if the things get out of hand, Turkey also part of the NATO. So if NATO mm -hmm. physically enter uh, the war, Turkey has to decide either join the war or get out of NATO. So these, uh, yeah. these are not, I mean, uh, these are still a realistic uh, option. So, uh, uh, I mean, I hope things it doesn't get out of hand, but we never know. That's interesting that you brought that up, uh, NATO. You know, with Turkey's again, with Turkey's uh, rebranding of itself and, and asserting itself on the global stage now as this uh, mediator, mediator slash leader. Um, how highly do you? I mean, what are the prospects? If we just mentioned uh, Turkey would have to make a decision if this escalates in Ukraine. Uh, how likely do you think that could happen? And, and do you think Turkey will be the like the uh, uh, the the country that actually ends up, let's say, breaking up NATO in, in, in a sense? And do you think that's a you know a benefit to Turkey or how likely is that? I mean, that's that's a probability. I think things are changing so quickly now that anything is possible. Anything is possible. I mean, it depends on our allies if they want to treat us like. Uh... Puppets in Arabic, they say dumia, uh, <laughs> if, uh, or like a dependence. We we cannot take that. But if Turkey is treated uh, equally and uh, also is convinced, you know, as I said, we were against Russian aggression from the beginning. But yeah. uh, if uh, uh, if you take uh, the decision without Turkey and also. Uh, want us to follow follow on this? No, we cannot. But if we are an equal partner and we we want, for example, the new uh, new potential members like Sweden and uh, Finland, mm -hmm. uh, Sweden and Finland, Finland, uh, you know, they they don't want to pay attention to Turkish uh, security concerns, which is terrorism and also radical groups operating in in these two countries. They want to, mm -hmm. you know, come together all the uh, European groups and pressure Turkey to accept them. No, we cannot. I mean, and even, you know, somebody comes and burns Quran in the Turkish embassy as if like a curse. I, I, I see sense of, I sense some kind of a conspiracy. I don't, uh, some, maybe some, some hands don't want Sweden to join as if like they want to make a problem. But these things happen, you know, it is. If they want the Sweden, they want to join the NATO, not us. So they are the ones that are, uh, they should uh, convince Turkey that uh, we are considerate, we are also taking care of them. They did some, mm -hmm. but uh, still not uh, not enough. And uh, they are allowing radical groups to operate and even, you know, use, uh, you know, unacceptable posters and all this. So. We know other European countries also supporting the PKK, but at the end, we uh, they don't need us as much. Uh, maybe we pressure them, but now Sweden and Finland they they need Turkish I mean approval. So at, the, at least they have to be con considerate and they have to be attentive, and then to set an example to others. So Turkey mm -hmm. is serious on this; will not uh, back up. Uh, from its insistence because uh, these terror groups are hurting Turkey and uh, we paid so much prices. And now Turkey is very successful inside. The, the PKK cannot operate, can do, uh, cannot, cannot do anything. Uh, you know, sometimes they just infiltrate from outside. So if uh, outside operations is now canceled, uh, so there is no PKK. So the danger is in the outside. So. Uh, Turkey is uh, pressuring these countries not to support them, and the PKK, uh, I mean, lost the ability to convince people to to take arms, to, to I mean, to go for separatism. Of course, there are some sympathy for the uh, Kurdish nationalism and stuff, but it is different from uh, you know using radical, I mean, methods and also uh, maybe peaceful and democratic means. So the PKK represents uh, uh, armed uh, armed rebellion. So we are uh, we are not saying cancel all the Kurdish uh, opposition or all activities. We these are you know 
that are uh, also they accept them as a terrorist group. I mean, they should go by their decision. You know, if you accept mm -hmm. this terrorist group and this guy or this lady is part of this, uh, opposite, I mean, this terrorist group, you have to do the necessary steps. So these are the requirements we are saying. And your question also: Will Turkey break up NATO? I don't think so. NATO is, is a strong institution, and uh, Turkey is the number two power in the in the NATO now building up its own also uh, fighting capacity so without Turkey I think NATO would be very weak so I don't think mm. the NATO uh, major uh, NATO countries will will like that and there is no discussing discussion to expel Turkey uh, from the NATO or no discussion inside Turkey also let's get out of NATO or something like I don't hear that mm. uh, that voice so I think the NATO, I mean, Turkey also so far uh, committed to NATO decision, not like EU decision. And uh, as you remember, we, Turkey tried to enter the EU for a long time, uh, and they didn't take Turkey as a member. Now EU takes a decision to to use sanctions against Russia, for example, or Iran or uh, other mm -hmm. countries, and now complain that Turkey, why Turkey is not. Uh, following uh, their decision, I mean, it's you chose not to take Turkey, so why you asked Turkey to, to abide by the? So it is, it's a complicated uh, situation, but uh, we are yeah. at the crossroads, so we know we we are gonna be affected by the hurricanes, by the uh, storms, by good uh, rain, and I mean, metaphorically uh, in in the global scene, I mean, political storms and uh, all this, but we are also, we are affected, but I think we are also affecting these uh, these dynamics. And we, we I mean, uh, geography is a destiny. It is, uh, it has advantages and disadvantages. Mm -hmm. I think Turkey is balancing that now. Vis-a-vis -vis the Arab world, vis-a-vis -vis the, even Iran, for example, uh, we, uh, we balanced our relations with Iran. Of course, uh, there is competition, but it doesn't reach to the level of conflict. Unlike some other Arab countries, they always complain about Iran, but don't do the necessary uh, measures or necessary reaction. I mean, uh, so just crying and just uh, <coughs> complaining doesn't help. So we, we do the necessary, I mean, uh, convincing and maybe using, replying in the same way that Iran is doing so. It is. I mean, they each side they know each other's uh, position and potential, so they choose not to not to offend the other side. Yes. Speaking of um, Iran, uh, I know I recently read that Russia was trying to bring together Turkey and Iran, um, you know, which could possibly lead to the normalization of relations between Turkey and Syria, possibly, right? Mm -hmm. Because there's this yeah. connection between Syria and Iran. How will this normalization affect the sour, uh, the sour Gulf states' relationship with Syria and Iran, once characterized as being, you know, part of the axis of evil? Do you see any normalization, like moving forward between these formerly, you know, considered enemy countries? Yes. I mean, Turkey is. Uh, I mean, uh, of, Turkey is a transparent country. Turkey, uh, if they. Say we normalize with this country, and no secret, but you know, the relations, the Arab countries' relations with Israel, they do something, uh, they say something in the public, they do something else in the in the in the hidden. So, but we are, I mean, uh, transparent. We are obvious. If uh, if you wanna uh, meet with the Assad regime, I think there are many still many hurdles, many conditions, many problems between Turkey and the uh, Assad regime normalization and why we uh, we would like uh, uh, to normalize with the Assad regime to uh, to take care of its own uh, people but still too too far from from this of course we we can encourage we can uh, pressure uh, but it is so weak it is so corrupt uh, and uh, you remember what happened to the aid that some Arab countries sent to the Syrian people, the Assad uh, 
aligned uh, groups that uh, st stole this uh, international aid and didn't reach uh, to the earthquake victims coming mm -hmm. from the Gulf, coming from Algeria and uh, some other Arab countries. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so the situation, uh, I, I think it's still in the beginning and it's going to take a lot of discussion. And as I said, we have a uh, now different world, different context, and uh, we, uh, we are testing, I mean, the waters, uh, what, uh, for example, what the Assad regime can offer, can take some of the Syrian refugees back, does he have the uh, eagerness, the willpower, or the capacity? <clears throat> Looks like uh, he's uh, lacking both of them. So he doesn't have the uh, uh, will to, to take them back. Plus, he, uh, he doesn't have the capacity to take care of even the, the ones who remain inside the country. He doesn't even have the capacity. Uh, I mean, some of them uh, may be uh, also related with the sanctions, but uh, I think uh, it is more than the sanctions, and mm -hmm. the regime already is very weak. Also, we, we talked to is, uh, the supervisors. Uh, I, I use it, I mean, Mushrifin, uh, uh, on the Assad regime. Uh, we already, I mean, the reason we are talking also related to this, if you are talking to the supervisor, uh, why you don't also talk to the uh, I mean, without uh, justifying uh, what he's doing. But uh, if you are talking to the boss, uh, which is Russia and Iran uh, for the Assad regime, and uh, why not also talk to the uh, uh, talk to the, the to the real target? Uh, and uh, so we are trying to understand what what can we do and what can. Uh, what can be achieved, how, uh, of course, Syrian refugees are uh, also uh, uh, in a dire situation in Lebanon and in Jordan, yes. uh, uh, and uh, Turkish, uh, uh, I mean, the ones uh, in Turkey are a uh, little bit better off with the economic situation, etc. but they are also hit again by the earthquake, because they, yes. some of them living, <laughs> were, were living in these 10 provinces that hit by the by the earthquake, so uh, wish them best. Uh, they are suffering. Maybe they became one more time. They became refugees. I mean, we victimized. Uh, yeah. uh, yes, we. Uh, I personally sympathize with the with the refugees so much that I even wrote that we uh, we are all potential refugees, and uh, you know, sure. with the disasters, wars, and uh, our people also became like refugee or migrants at least inside the country, lost their homes yes. and valuables. So we should sympathize with them. And uh, again, the Syrians, uh, maybe some of them, fourth time, fifth time, they became refugees and they need the international support also. Turkey uh, needs support, but Syrian people need support more than, uh, more than us. Uh, of course, Turkey is uh, aiding them, not uh, distinguishing between the Turkish uh, sufferers and the Syrian sufferers from the earthquake from the disaster, but uh, they need more international support also. Yes. You mentioned uh, earlier uh, sanctions. I want to kind of backtrack a little bit on that and have uh, ask you about sanctions. Um, um, as a follow-up to a previous question that, about the Gulf states um, and Turkey, uh, as you know, it seems as though that the Gulf states and Turkey are evading sanctions or seemed you know, seem to be evading the sanctions placed on Russia by the West, or that's what the narrative is right now in the news. Uh, the U.S. Treasurer just uh, warned earlier last week, I think, or maybe about a couple, you know, a couple of days ago, that individuals and institutions operating in permissive jurisdictions, including the UAE and Turkey, um, risk losing access to G7 markets. How seriously should Turkey uh, take those threats? And what is at stake if it continues working with the Gulf states and Russia? Is there anything at stake? I think we, uh, I mean, we are clear that we are, uh, we are not, uh, I mean, obliged to uh, follow up, I mean, one-sided uh, sanctions either applied by the United States or by the EU. 
if mm-hmm. there is a NATO decision, we go by it. If there is a UN decision, we go by it. And uh, also, we don't want to uh, enter, you know, the uh, the mere uh, payment system that was uh, used by the Russian tourists, you know, with the uh, with the agreement with uh, I think was a pre- maybe pressure from America that we cancel that, you know, the, those uh, who pay uh, have to, I think, either use the cash or some other accept- acceptable means of uh, uh, payment. I mean, there are some uh, negotiations, I mean, uh, coming and going, but uh, we we are not part of this war. We take a stance. We also provide humanitarian aid to Ukraine and also sell them Bayraktar and other uh, technological facilities, but uh, it depends on the how. I think the current situation, if continues like that, it is not going to change much. But uh, you know, uh, now some Western countries they want to give uh, Ukraine these tanks and some long-range missiles if if the war gets more uh, crazy out of control, maybe uh, the pressure or the tension is going to increase and it's going to uh, maybe uh, uh, put more pressure on Turkey also. But I mean, we realize that, but uh, so far the situation is kind of a stable, kind mm-hmm. of a, a sustained war in a, in a sense that uh, uh, we don't know where, it's, where it is going, but uh, right now, I think everybody is okay with the current status. Of course, when the summer comes or the spring comes, and uh, I think this is kind of a, a sleeping mode, uh, in, a, in a way, kind of hibernation mode the war uh, has taken. Uh, maybe in spring you, you can have very drastic uh, situations if, um, if Russia uses uh, some... Uh, Small uh, nuclear weapons, tactical weapons, they say, or uh, how we don't know how many uh, tanks they are going to give to Ukraine, how much mm. will uh, effect they will have on the ground, uh, <clears throat> how many uh, long range or medium medium range missiles uh, they are going to give to Ukraine, and how it's going to affect the situation on the ground. We all see these are all. A hypothetical, also maybe uh, potential uh, situations, and everybody will adapt to that. And I, but I know uh, the West uh, in this uh, both sides, even the West doesn't want to lose Turkey, and Russia doesn't want to lose Turkey. Doesn't want to have a puppet government in Turkey that's uh, maybe hundred percent with uh, with America. So I think the current situation is sustainable for Turkey. It depends on the nature of crisis, how 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 grave it's gonna get, get, and we'll see. But uh, uh, I see. I mean, I don't see a serious change recently. Mm-hmm. I mean, uh, soon. Well, the, the U.S. Speaking of pressure, I think the U.S. has a lot to worry about as well. Um, I, like for example, bilateral trade between the United States and UAE exceeded, I think, twenty three point something billion dollars in 2021. So mm-hmm. what's at stake for the United States for following through, let's say, on, on its warning to Tur- Turkey and the Gulf states with its sanctions? What's at stake for the U.S.? Let's turn this around to the U.S. now, because I think that the U.S. has a lot more to use at this juncture in time. Yes, I just read the news that, uh, I mean, Saudi, China became the, uh, the first uh, number, uh, I mean, number one, trade partner to Saudi mm-hmm. Arabia. So, uh, I mean, maybe selling a lot of oil and buying a lot of Chinese goods, maybe. That's, that's the secret. But this, mm-hmm. I mean, it also shows that uh, also why Saudi Arabia became uh, in a little bit distance from Obama administration, mm-hmm. from, from America. And, uh, of course, after Russia, America still has China to worry about. I mean, Turkey is not a headache for uh, for America and America choose to be a headache for Turkey, and uh, of course they have uh, China as superpower. I mean it's a real competition, even more than uh, more than Russia. 
So uh, I don't I don't know how they are gonna uh, handle that, but at the end, uh, you know, superpowers uh, struggle sometimes gets very ugly. Sometimes small countries like Afghanistan can pay a price during the Cold War, for example. Let's remember even the recent uh, recently they are also uh, like Ukraine even. Uh, Pays the price of being in the border. Is gonna is Russia gonna expand toward the west, or is uh, west is gonna uh, push back uh, Russia uh, to a smaller position? So uh, these uh, global conflicts become or superpower conflicts can get ugly. I hope not, but uh, there is still uh, a lot to to see and. Uh, Turkey, of course, is uh, focused on Turkey. Is worried about uh, recovering from the earthquake. Of course, is not. Uh, I mean, taking eyes on what's what's going on in uh, in in the region, in the global arena, and we are very glad. Also, Turkey is, uh, you know, all 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 countries uh, pay the tribute to. Turkey's victims in, in the earthquake sent uh, AIDS, I mean, uh, very, very, very uh, significant and also very appreciated that Arab countries were more generous than the Western allies. So, mm -hmm. uh, so I mean, just let me talk about a little bit, if, uh, if you may, uh, in, inside situation. Of course, the disasters hit a lot, but it kind of uh, creates a sense of uh, unity it's maybe not expected between the Kurds and Turks and even with the refugees that people criticize them and some parties they they want to criticize them and they were shut up you know by uh, you know ordinary people they don't want to uh, uh, hear this uh, you know uh, end of racist uh, Propaganda because they said all, all, all over the world the people came to the rescue and why we should uh, distinguish uh, or exclude Syrians and even the uh, kind of I see that as a sociologist myself I see that the sympathy also increased toward the Syrians their sufferings and stuff so it is uh, the mood even though we, we we feel like hit by a major uh, major disaster but. We, we saw a sense of solidarity and unity that many people, I mean, even my children, my my students in the university collecting uh, clothes and uh, utility items that uh, sending them to, to the disaster areas. Very, very good uh, uh, sense of solidarity that uh, yes. I think uh, promises uh, a revival or a recovery, maybe quick recovery. I mean, it's a big disaster, but uh, uh, I, I, we hope that it's going to bring a recovery from uh, from this. Amazing, amazing how disaster diplomacy just. I mean, if we were just to stay in that mode all the time, the world would be a much better place. Yeah, than, yeah. Unfortunately, if if the countries realize that life is short, and yeah. uh, you know we have limited resources, we have to share with each other. I mean, this is a, a crisis situation. Reminds us or the disaster situations remind us, but we uh, tend to forget that very easily and we, we try to take uh, more than what we deserve. Remind us of how much in common we have, you know, yes. as opposed to differences. 